In our previous video, we have dealt in detail about the anatomy of permanent maxillary canines, which are also called as the cornerstones of the dental arch. In this video, we will be dealing in detail about the anatomy of permanent mandibular canines. Since the permanent mandibular canines are also located at the corners of the mouth, they are also called as the cornerstones of the dental arch. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi, we at Dentorize welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. The permanent mandibular canines are two in number, located as third tooth from the median line on the right and the left side. According to the FDI tooth notation system, the permanent right mandibular canine is numbered as 43 and the permanent left mandibular canine is numbered as 33. The dental anatomy of a permanent mandibular canine will be discussed under five headings. These are the labial aspect, the lingual aspect, the mesial aspect, the distal aspect and the incisal aspect. Starting with the labial aspect first, considering the first heading that is the dimensions. From our video on cusp, we already know that the permanent mandibular canine has one cusp. If you are not clear with this concept, please do check out our video on cusp. The link is given in the description box below. Therefore, measuring the cervical incisal dimension from the cusp tip to the lowest point on the cervical line, the measurement comes out to be 11 mm. The root length can be measured from the lowest point on the cervical line till the root apex which is 16 mm. The total length of this tooth becomes 11 mm plus 16 mm that is 27 mm. The total length of a permanent maxillary canine is also 27 mm. This implies both the permanent maxillary canine and the mandibular canine are longest teeth than any other teeth present in the dental arch. However, a permanent mandibular canine has the longest crown length of 11 mm and a permanent maxillary canine has the longest root length of 17 mm. Coming to the mesodistal dimensions of a permanent mandibular canine, the mesodistal dimensions as measured from the contact areas is 7 mm, while the mesodistal dimensions as measured from the cervix is 5.5 mm. On comparing the mesodistal dimensions of a permanent mandibular canine from those of the maxillary canine, we find that from the labial aspect, the mesodistal dimensions of mandibular canine are less than those of maxillary canines. We already know that the crown length of a permanent mandibular canine is greater than the crown length of a permanent maxillary canine. However, the effect of greater length of a mandibular canine is emphasized by two more further points. These are the narrowness of the crown mesodistally. As we have already read that the mesodistal dimensions of a permanent mandibular canine are less in comparison to those of maxillary canines. Therefore, this less dimension gives an appearance of crown being little more longer. Point number two, the height of contact areas above the cervix. We will be discussing about the contact areas in our subsequent sections. These both points are responsible for crown to appear much more longer as compared to the crown of maxillary canines. After the dimensions, let's discuss about the outlines of a permanent mandibular canine from the labial aspect. The mesial outline of the crown of mandibular canine is almost straight with the mesial outline of the root and so is the distal outline of the crown in the root. If we talk about the mesial contact area, the mesial contact area of a permanent mandibular canine is present near the mesioincisal angle. If you are not clear with what a mesioincisal angle is, please do check out our video on line angles and point angles of teeth. The link is given in the description box below. The distal contact area of a permanent mandibular canine is more towards the incisal aspect than that of maxillary canine but it is not at the same level as that of the mesial contact area. Please observe the figure very carefully and compare it with the contact areas of the maxillary canine and observe the difference in the level of contact areas. 
coming to the cuspal outline of a permanent mandibular canine, we know that a permanent mandibular canine has only one cusp. Therefore, the slope of the cusp present towards the mesial side will be called as the mesial slope and the slope of cusp present towards the distal side will be called as the distal slope. If we compare the dimensions of the mesial slope and the distal slope, we find that the mesial slope is shorter in dimension as compared to the distal slope, very much similar to that of the maxillary canine. On observing the orientation of the cusp tip or the cusp angle with that of the root apex, we find that the cusp angle is on a line with center of the root. Please observe the figure very carefully. Coming to the cervical line and the root, as we can see in the figure, the cervical line labially has a semicircular curvature with the curvature pointing apically. The overall root length is shorter than that of the permanent maxillary canine by 1 to 2 mm. Curvatures are very infrequent in the root of a permanent mandibular canine. However, if they are present, they are present in a mesial direction. The apex of the root is sharply pointed. This was all about the labial aspect of a permanent mandibular canine. Now let's discuss about the lingual aspect of a permanent mandibular canine which has significant differences from the lingual aspect of a permanent maxillary canine. Unlike the lingual surface of crown of maxillary canines which had significant convexities and concavities, the lingual surface of the crown of mandibular canine is flatter, smooth and regular simulating the lingual surface of mandibular incisors. Let's see how. Starting from the cervical line and then moving towards the cusp tip, we find a small elevation first which is that of the cingulum. However, the cingulum of a permanent mandibular canine is smooth and poorly developed in comparison to the cingulum of a permanent maxillary canine which is very well developed and at times pointed like a cusp. The lingual ridge, the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge of a permanent mandibular canine are less distinct than that of the maxillary canines. However, the lingual ridge of a permanent mandibular canine is raised at the cusp tip. If we talk about the mesolingual fossa and the distal lingual fossa, they are present in a permanent mandibular canine but are very less distinct in comparison to that of the maxillary canines. If we talk about the root from the lingual aspect, the lingual portion of the root of a permanent mandibular canine is relatively narrower than that of the maxillary canine. From the mesial aspect, characteristic differences are evident between the permanent maxillary canine and the permanent mandibular canine. Coming to the first heading that is the dimensions, the labiolingual dimension as measured from the crest of contour present in the cervical third of the crown is 7.5 mm, while the labiolingual dimensions as measured from the cervix is 7 mm. If we talk about the orientation of the cusp tip with that of the root apex as we have already discussed, the tip of the cusp is more nearly centered over the root. However, in some cases, a lingual placement of cusp tip can be seen with respect to the root apex which can be comparable to the placement of incisal ridges on the mandibular incisors. Coming to the outlines of the tooth as observed from the mesial aspect, if we talk about the labial outline first, the labial outline of the crown of a permanent mandibular canine has less curvature in comparison to the labial outline of crown of permanent maxillary canine. If we talk about the lingual outline, starting from the cervical line and then moving towards the cusp tip, we observe that there is a convexity of the cingulum, however the convexity is not very pronounced in comparison to the convexity of a permanent maxillary canine. If we talk about the incisal portion of the crown of permanent mandibular canine, the incisal portion of the crown is thinner labiolingually which allows the cusp tip to appear more pointed and the cusp ridge to appear more slender which is not the case in a permanent maxillary canine. Coming to the cervical line and root of a permanent mandibular canine, if we talk about the cervical line, the cervical line curves more towards the incisal portion in a permanent mandibular canine than does the cervical line on the maxillary canine. If we talk about the developmental depression, the developmental depression measly on the root of a mandibular canine is more pronounced and sometimes quite deep than the maxillary canine. The root tip of a mandibular canine is more pointed. 
After the mesial aspect, let's discuss about the distal aspect of a permanent mandibular canine. The distal aspect of this tooth is very, very much similar to that of the mesial aspect of this tooth except one difference. This difference lies in the curvature of cervical line wherein the curvature of cervical line on the mesial aspect is more in comparison to that of the curvature of cervical line on the distal aspect. Please observe the figure very carefully. Coming to the last aspect of a permanent mandibular canine that is the incisal aspect. On comparing the mesodistal and the labiolingual dimensions of this tooth we find that the mesodistal dimension of mandibular canine is less than that of the labiolingual dimension which is very much similar to that of a permanent maxillary canine. However, there is a slight difference. The difference is that the outline of the mesial surface of a mandibular canine is less curved in comparison to that of the maxillary canine. Please observe the figure very carefully. There is one very important difference between the anatomy of a permanent maxillary canine and the mandibular canine from the incisal aspect with respect to the inclination of the cusp tip and the cusp ridges. In the permanent maxillary canine as we have already studied, the cusp tip is present in straight lines with that of the cusp ridges as you can see in the figure also. However, in a permanent mandibular canine, the cusp tip as marked in the figure in blue and the mesial cusp ridge as marked in the figure in red are more likely to be inclined in a lingual direction in comparison to that of the distal cusp ridge and the distal contact area. So this was all about the dental anatomy of a permanent mandibular canine. In our next video, we will be making direct comparison between the anatomy of permanent maxillary canine and permanent mandibular canine for your quick reference. If you like our content, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Suggestions are always welcome from your side. If you have any doubts, you can post your doubts in the comment box. We will be happy to help you. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Stay safe.